I'm not sure uh, what the league office is discussing uh, with the brass on potential dates. Uh, from the layman's view, I don't see anywhere right now, uh, at least on a weekend, where that would be feasible for both programs. But obviously in this pandemic season, um, who knows if there will be further cancellations that we could pair up. But again, um, that's the furthest thing from my mind right now is when we're playing them. Um, but it's a valid question and one that uh, I don't have the answer to. And I'm not sure when we'll have that answer. Okay. At this point, we'll just open it up for questions for, uh, for Coach. Coach, I guess seemingly just listening to you answer that, um, I think one would think, okay, is there in any thoughts at all about shutting this thing down or anything like that? And it seems like that's not even an option for you guys. Do I have that correct? It's not an option for me if, if I'm making the decision, but obviously, you know, that's not something probably that I would get to make a final decision on. Um, you know, we're, we, we've gone so far at this point and unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, the, the finish line is, is in sight now. Um, I think it's 46 days till the first round of the WAC tournament. I think we've been down here for around 70 days, if I'm not mistaken, something like that, give or take a day or two either way. So um, if you look at it from that perspective, you know, we're, we're, we're not certainly down the home stretch. We played three games, but in terms of the basketball season, they're not waiting for us. Um, we've got to do our best to try to um, stay healthy and safe and, and get to a point where we can get back on the court and practice and compete. But um, I think my players would answer the same way. At least that's the feedback I'm getting thus far. Uh, and I think it says a lot about, their love for the game, their commitment to each other, their commitment to the program. Um, Cause trust me, being down here, I can see how uh, it would be easy to do that. And we've talked about it, you know, it, it's, it's questioning um, how much you really truly love um, this game. And, and, um, and it's way bigger than that. But I think that is a question that everyone has to answer at some point. Um, but again, um, I, I'm not in, in a position where I make those type of decisions. But if, if I was asked, um, that's definitely the answer I would give it. Coach, I know the days kind of tend to blur together once you guys are there, but can you kind of help provide a better timeline of just when those extra positives started to come in, how many there were these past few days? Yeah, you're right. It's a blur, Justin. And I'm not sure how you could understand that because you're not down here, but um, I don't have it written down. I don't know the exact timeline. I couldn't recite it off memory um, because of, of the mumble jumble and the blur. Um, but we've had multiple tests. Um, I think it's been roughly two weeks since we've had a full practice. When it gets to that point, um, it's you know almost Groundhog Day around here uh, every day. So uh, anything specific like that, uh, I think you're better served uh, asking Mario or Braun, who probably, you know, kept better notes of, of things like that. But uh, I'm not trying to avoid the question. I just I don't really off the top of my head have the answers. It's not something that I'm, I'm documenting. Um, I just talk with campus daily on where we're at. What, you know, what's the next move? Uh, you know, when's the next test? When when? Uh, when are your thoughts about trying to get back uh, on the court? So uh, unfortunately, I don't have that specific information. Coach, I know you, you said that you didn't know exactly what the league office is discussing in order to make up some of these games. I guess for you, just from your perspective, is it problematic to play two midweek games followed by two games on the weekend with a in your opinion, would they need to split maybe those two games up, one one week, one another week, or just kind of, if you had it your way, what would you want? Yeah, those are great questions and great thoughts. And I feel the same way you do. 
Um, at this point for us, I, we're in such dire need for games. I think we play four or five days a week if we had our druthers. You know, once we get a few practices under our belt, we need the game experience so badly, regardless of the outcome, just to try to get better. But not everyone will feel that way. Um, I don't know what the uh, whack decision makers ultimately will do. You know, will they give us dates? Hey, here's two options. You guys work it out. Or will they leave it up to the schools? I don't know. But we're going to need some direction. We're going to need some uh, people to make decisions and almost tell us what to do. Uh, if they leave it up to programs, then, um, you know, who knows? Some teams may not want to make it up. I'm not talking about Rio Grande Valley. I'm talking about any situation like this because I'm pretty confident, unfortunately, that this isn't the first situation that's going to happen like this. We're just starting the conference race. And so they're going to have to make some decisions on how they're going to handle it. And I don't know if they have a plan. I haven't heard one, haven't seen one. No one's told me one. Right now it's, well, if you can work on open dates, you know, together, you have a weekend open and pair up like we did with Dixie. But that was easy. You know, these aren't easy when there's no open dates left throughout the season. I'm confident they want to play. I know we want to play. Uh, when that's going to be, that remains to be seen. But I'm with you. You know, are we going to play uh, Monday, Tuesday, you know, between weekends? which to me would seem um, the best solution, or are we going to play one game and then wait a week and play another game, which causes more travel, um, et cetera. Or do we just play one game? You know, I think that's something that they hopefully have thought about, um, but decisions are going to have to be made. And I think they're going to have to be made pretty quickly and um, leaving it up to the programs to work it out to me is not the solution. I think at this point, the WAC uh, folks that make these type of decisions uh, need to make them and need to tell the programs, here's when you're playing. And, and that's just the way it's going to be. I see other leagues doing it all the time. Um, playing the two games makes it a little more difficult, but, you know, it, it's been an uneven season. We knew it was going to be an uneven season when we started. We knew the fairness category was going to be thrown out the window with, you know, going to play someone twice and not getting a return game, you know, uh, all those things, uh, having players down games because of um, contact tracing or a positive. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, I'm interested to see, um, you know, when, when they start telling us uh, what, what their plan is. Have you been able to put like a finger on how these positive tests are coming about? Uh, just, I mean, you guys are at the resort and everything. How, how do you have an idea? Or I know it's it's kind of difficult, but have you been able? Uh, are to you serious? That? Like, I'm a basketball coach. I'm not a doctor. Um, I don't know how many people you know that have been infected. Like, how many people you know personally? But some of them have a really good idea of how they contracted the virus, and I would bet others have no clue. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know you that. I don't know you that well, but. Um, I have ideas. I have theories of how some of our guys have been affected. And there's definitely been some, some spread amongst our program. And what happens is when someone gets it, you don't know they have it. I mean, when you're testing every day, like we have been for, for days, okay. Weeks every day. You don't know the day they actually have it in their system. It's not the day they pop positive. So for days on end, they can have it and spread it, but we don't know it's being spread because we don't know that person has it. So it's, it's a slippery slope. And I think in theory, first of all, we need to throw the bubble word out the door. We're not living in a bubble. We're living in a public hotel that is open for business. There's a golf course next to my villa, okay? Um, there are other functions going on at this resort. They are a business. They are trying to make money. I get it, okay? We're not the only residents of, of this uh, particular resort. Now, I think in theory, and I believe, we've had less contact with others outside of our tier one group than most programs across the country. I got to believe that. 
because I'm here every day and I know what our schedule is. There's no question we've had less contact with um, the outside world than most people. But at the same time, in my opinion, once it gets inside of your program, because we're living together, because we're on top of each other in this hotel, it can spread much easier than it would if we were going to our own homes or if we were in quarantine in our apartment or dorm or whatever the situation would be and have zero contact with anybody else. I don't know if we're grabbing the same door handle and it's spreading that way. I don't know. I do know for a fact, because I'm here and I'm testing that guys have gotten it or guys have had symptoms and test negative for days on end. And we've told them to quarantine once they get a, uh, a symptom, okay? And then three or four days later, they'll finally pop. And, and that's happened many times, okay? It's not like we haven't gotten on buses to go to games. We haven't gotten on planes to go to games. We have to go to the doctor's office. We have to go to get orthotics. Uh, we've got to do a lot of different things. Um, so, and let's not forget this. This wasn't our choice. <laughs> we didn't choose to come to Phoenix and stay at the Arizona Grand and try to play a basketball season during a pandemic. We didn't have a choice. <laughs> we were given limited choices on what to do by various people and various entities. So if people are pointing fingers and raising eyebrows, come down here and live with us for a couple of weeks, okay? And, and I'm very confident that um, and proud of our team, our program, for how they're handling this situation. I'm with them every day. I got a pretty good idea of, of what it's like. And they've been resilient. They've been tough-minded. And we've had issues. I mean, and the other thing people forget is lives are going around, going, going on back home where they're from, okay? And they've had bad stuff happen to them that I'm not gonna get into the details about. Really bad stuff, tragedies. And they're stuck here in this hotel, not even in their college hometown and having to deal with these tragedies. So um, it's been quite a quite a ordeal, okay? But for anyone to really ask me that question and for me to know the direct answer, I'd be lying to you, I'm not a doctor. I don't even think a doctor can answer that question from where I sit and the experience I've gone through of watching our guys test, watching them act, knowing what they're doing and who's gotten it, who hasn't gotten it. Like I haven't gotten it and I'm not gonna talk specifics because of privacy, et cetera, but I haven't gotten it. But I'm shocked that I haven't because of exposure I've had to certain people that I didn't know they had it. And then they end up getting it. And I'm like, oh, I'm dead. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. And, and I haven't. So, it's, it's um, a long-winded uh, answer to your question. Hopefully that could shed some light to some people about um, how we feel about it and what's going on. But um, again, I'm, I'm more proud of, of our players and our program for, uh, and I see it every day. I'm with them every day. Their response, their resiliency, their togetherness. And it's been questioned. I mean, come on, you wouldn't be human if you couldn't say, man, is this worth it? But um, all I know is, is there's got to be some good news at, at, at the end of this journey. There's got to be a pot of gold. There's got to be some better days ahead for, for these young men and the other people that are going through this with us. And um, that's what we're counting on. That's what we're praying on. That's what we're counting on. And until then, we've just got to try to fight through it as best we can. Kind of shifting gear toward a recruiting basketball question. Um, you know, uh, obviously, you and your staff have you know been you know making sure to you know hit the recruiting trail here too. So um, I think talked with compliance today and uh, talked to us a little bit about uh, you know uh, Gerald Dokes and um, you know what he can kind of you know bring here and you know what uh, what what kind of situation transpired to get you guys talking to him and communicating with him and uh, uh, and how we kind of wound up uh, wound up in Aggie here. Yeah, we're excited to uh, welcome Gerald to the program. Um, you know, we've known Gerald for quite some time and he went to a prep school this fall and, and graduated and became a uh, NCAA qualifier uh, uh, 
during the break. You know, he needed another semester of post-grad situation after high school. And, um, you know, he's elected to, to join our program. Um, you know, obviously, you know, heck of a time to, to walk into to our program for him. And I, I feel bad for, for him and his people around him that the timing of, of him joining us, but um, it is what it is. And um, hopefully, you know, we can get him on the court here real soon and start working with him. And, um, you know, he can get uh, initiated into uh, our program. What does he kind of bring to the table for your coach? I mean, just speed, quickness, athleticism. What's kind of his calling card, really, if you're, if you're looking at film on him? Yeah, you know, um, I'm, I'm old school in the thought process that you really don't know what you have until you work with a young man for weeks, especially when you haven't seen him in person, you know, with the pandemic recruiting, everything's been on video. And certainly we've watched plenty of video on Gerald. And, um, you know, from that, you know, he's, he's a live body. He's, he's a good athlete. Um, he's got a scores mentality. I uh, really like the fact that he can elevate on his jump shot. You don't see that as much as you used to. And he can, he really elevates and plays bigger than his actual size because of his uh, ability to get off the floor when, when he shoots his jumper. So, um, you know, but again, you know, he knows nothing about division one basketball. He doesn't know anything about our system. Uh, he's got a long way to go to, to learn, you know, how, how the expectations that we have daily and, and, the system and um, he doesn't have, you know, the summer uh, like, like a lot of these kids usually have going into their first year. So um, he'll have to uh, learn a ton on the fly. I know by nature coaches are recruiters. Um, so I don't want to say that, you know, you guys haven't gone hard at recruiting in years past, but does it feel like you guys have been able to ramp it up a little bit just concerning your circumstances right now at all, even though you're not allowed to see guys in person? Oh, I don't know if we've ramped it up. Um, I mean, I'm a broken record when it comes to this, but I got professionals around me. <laughs> I got the best of the best and they're hungry and they're experienced and they're respected. And, you know, we feel we've got a great program to sell. And so if you add all that up, um, you know, our guys are, are on the lookout all the time and you know recruiting never stops i mean if you have a good program you don't recruit these few months and then take a few weeks off and these few months like in college basketball it just never ends it's constant um and you've got to stay on top of it you've got to keep your ear to the ground and you've got to be aware of, of what's going on and who's available and you know um, pair up with what you're looking for and we're certainly always trying to um you know, be on top of situation point, regardless of when it is, you know, around the signing date, not around the signing date, you know, it could be any time in this day and age. Um, and it's going to, you know, even get more so that way. I think uh, it, once they pass um, the new legislation that that's been um, put off for a while, but I think eventually we'll pass with the transfer rules, et cetera. So, um, I don't think we've ramped it up. I think that's just what uh, our guys do. Anything else for coach this morning, guys? <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, perfect. Hearing none. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning, coach. We appreciate it. And thanks for joining us, uh, Assembled Media. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, coach. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, coach.